Hello friends, perhaps some of you have heard the words, to die, to live again. But not many of you have thought about the fact that for some people, they can be practical advice. And for some people, they can even be part of a new life. Today's story is not about the transmigration of souls or anything that goes along with it. This story is more about fortitude and willpower. The will to live, despite the fact that for everyone else, you've been dead for a long time. Juliana Kopka recently celebrated her 65th birthday and her 48th birthday. Many would say something is not right, but when you hear the story of this amazing woman, it all becomes clear. Juliana was born on October 10, 1954 to a family of German immigrants. Juliana's mother, Maria, was an ornithologist and her father a biologist. The girl's life went her own way. Kindergarten, school friends, favorite hobbies and entertainment, and of course, the first date. Recently, the girl was 17 years old. She was already finishing school. Because her parents were scientists, they had spent most of their lives traveling and the last few years working in Peru. Christmas was coming. It is known to be a family holiday, so even though her father was in South America, Juliana and her mother decided to give him an unforgettable gift. On December 24th, 1971, they decided to fly for the vacation to Father, who was then working in Pucallpa. The plane was a Lockheed I-188A electric with 86 passengers and six crew members. It was a passenger flight from Lima to Pucallpa and took off on its assigned course, but never landed again. There was a slight delay that day due to bad weather in the Andean area, but after several hours of waiting, the flight was allowed to depart after all. Since it was Christmas Eve, there were a large number of people gathered at the Lima airport in a hurry to get home or to their families to celebrate the holidays with them, and so were eager to get on any plane that was nearest and available. By coincidence, one of these was Flight 508, which despite the distrust of the airline in general, was fully booked. That's where Maria, 47, and her 17-year-old daughter Juliana ended up. Flight 508 took off from Lima at approximately 12 p.m. and headed through the mountains, climbing to an altitude of 6,400 meters. As Juliana herself, who was sitting in seat 19F at the window, later recounted, the first 25 minutes of the flight went quite normally, and the passengers began to be served sandwiches. When the airliner crossed the Andes, there were thunderstorm clouds ahead, which were quite common in the region, so perhaps the crew, relying on their experience and underestimating the strength of the storm, decided not to avoid the weather, which would have increased the duration of the flight and beaten the schedule, and fly through it. As Juliana recalls, gradually the clouds began to get thicker and darker, and there was a lot of turbulence. In just five minutes, it was dark as night, and the airliner was tossing from side to side, causing things in the cabin to fall off the shelves. Then there was a bright flash near the right wing. Probably lightning had struck close to the engine, igniting the kerosene vapor in the wing fuel tank. The fuel explosion destroyed the structure of the right wing and its compartment, after which the plane went into a spin out of control. Of course, the crew began to try to regain control, but in the severe turbulence overload resulted in the separation of the left wing as well. It is difficult to imagine the reaction and fear of the passengers in the cabin when they saw, felt, and realized that the only thing left was to pray. Flight 508 went down, collapsing from the overload. The wreckage was scattered over an area with a 15-kilometer radius. Juliana was thrown out of the cabin at an altitude of 3,200 meters, along with the three-passenger seat to which she had been strapped the entire time. The seat spun around in the air, after which she lost consciousness, and as it would later turn out, she fell into the Amazon forest. Flight IP-508 was scheduled to arrive in Pucallpa at 12.47 p.m., but several hours passed and there was no word from the crew, so an urgent search involving aviation was initiated. But the situation was complicated by the fact that the wreckage had managed not to break the trees when it fell, but had simply disappeared into the wooded area. They were very difficult to spot from the air, and small fires were quickly put out by torrential rain. 
In many ways, the search was also complicated by the fact that it was unclear in what area the airliner had disappeared. In addition, many speculated that it had actually crashed in the central Andes, crashing into a mountain. A few days later, everyone on board was declared dead. No one doubted it. No one would survive such a crash. Sometimes, however, people are very wrong. Juliana remained unconscious until 9 o'clock in the morning. She used her wristwatch to determine the time. When she awoke the next day, December 25th, she found herself lying in the dirt under a chair. Her mother, seat 19E, who had been sitting in the same chair with her, and a fat man, seat 19D, had disappeared. Juliana woke up with a terrible headache and collarbone pain and severe nausea as well. Her whole body was in cuts, and she had no strength to unbuckle from her chair, but she knew, clearly, she was alive. The three-seat chair to which she was strapped didn't fall down as a rock, but rather floated, thereby cushioning the impact. Thus, fate gave the girl a second birthday. But that was only the beginning of her arduous journey to salvation. Trying to take a few steps, the girl fainted from pain. She could not walk, and every step was terribly difficult. The problem was compounded by the fact that Juliana was severely short-sighted. Her glasses were naturally broken, and the only clothes she was wearing were a thin mini-dress, which was popular at the time. Juliana tried to find the rest of the people, but no one was around, nor was there any more of the wreckage from the airliner. It was necessary to go, though dangerous, but staying where she was was equivalent of laying down your arms and simply waiting for imminent death. The girl decided to get out at all costs, not knowing which way to go or where she was. Exploring her surroundings, the girl found a bag of candy that she had taken with her. It was her only food. As she took her next step, she threw her shoes in front of her to avoid potholes or other danger. So for three days, she simply walked forward in the hope that she would someday reach a settlement or a road. The places to sleep were chosen in advance while it was still light. Julia made sure her back was protected by a thick tree or slope and used a few large leaves instead of a blanket. It was rainy season and the raindrops beat on her body, disturbing her sleep. If it rained all night, the girl would actually stay awake until morning. On nights when it didn't rain, the mosquitoes pestered her a lot. On the morning of the third day, she stumbled upon another chair, to which three female passengers were strapped. The overturned chair slammed into the ground like a shell, burrowing almost a meter, and all three who were sitting in it died instantly. One of the women looked like her mother, so despite her fear, the girl decided to check, but it turned out not to be her. This gave her hope that her mother was alive. By the chair, Julia found a pie that was mixed with dirt and unpalatable. At the time, she hadn't yet realized how long her journey would last, so the girl threw it away and began to explore her surroundings. Fortunately, after several hours of travel, Juliana heard the sound of a stream, which she headed downstream to since she knew from her father's lessons that the stream flows into a larger channel which is already a river and that rivers can have settlements on their banks. That same day, she found a broken engine in the stream, the space around it covered with oil. It was much easier to walk, but the chance of encountering poisonous snakes was very high. She had also often encountered caimans, but she knew that they were not dangerous to humans, as well as the piranhas that lived in flowing water were not dangerous. She lost count several times of how many days had passed since the crash. The pain haunted the girl. Standing or sitting was unbearable. Even just chewing the small berries was hard. But Juliana's troubles did not end there. After a few days, the wounds on her legs festered and the humid climate quickly caused maggots to set in. It only got worse. Every day brought only intolerable pain and suffering. Dangers surrounded her at every turn, but the schoolgirl kept walking. The candy she found ran out after three days, and instead of food, she just drank a lot of water and ate berries. Ten days passed that way, but the creek never led to people. Hope was already leaving the girl, and she no longer had the strength to walk. 
Juliana sat down on the ground and thought that this was the end, that she would never be able to see her family again and hold them tightly. Tears streamed down her face, but our heroine found the strength to move on, and it paid off. On January 3, 1972, on the way to the Pajitea River, Juliana suddenly saw a boat tied to the shore and a can of gasoline. There must be people near the boat, Juliana thought. So the girl mustered her strength and slowly walked. Her feet reverberated with the pain of maggots. Then she remembered the case of the puppy who had parasites on his feet, but her father cured them with kerosene. Gasoline might do the trick, she thought. With difficulty, she overcame the ascent and saw the hut where she had climbed. The rays of the setting sun were burning in the sky when Juliana regained consciousness. A stranger was bent over her, poking her with a dirty stick. It turned out that the locals, returning to the shore, had seen a half-naked stranger who looked more like a forest spirit than a human being. She was discovered by a logger, Marcio Ribera, who was with two buddies. Using gasoline from a boat motor tank, her wounds were washed out, removing many worms, and 11 hours later, she was transported by boat to the village. Juliana was then transported to the local airfield, and from there to Pucallpa, where she was placed in the mission hospital. Only a day later, Hans Wilhelm Kopke found his daughter. Thanks to Juliana's testimony, a massive search operation involving multiple aircraft, including the U.S. Air Force, was launched on January 5th. The same day, the crash site of Flight 508 was found from a Peruvian aircraft, and on January 6th, the Peruvian military arrived at the site. As it turned out later, 14 other people also survived the crash and fall from altitude, but they died over the next two days from their wounds and lack of water. By January 13th, 91 bodies had been found. That is, all the dead, of whom 56 could be identified, including Juliana's mother, Maria Kopke. For a long time, the girl was haunted by nightmares of that ill-fated day. For several years, she mourned her mother and the people who had died. The girl did not understand why, out of so many people, she was the only survivor. After Juliana fully recovered, she enrolled and trained as a biologist, like her parents, and after a while, returned to Peru to study the Amazon forest. At the age of 57, she wrote a book, when I Fell from the Sky. There she tells of her miraculous rescue. Several movies have been made about this amazing story of survival and struggle, all of which are noteworthy. For the past 10 years, however, Juliana has lived close to her children and grandchildren, working part-time at the library, which among others, has her book. She willingly holds meetings with readers, where she tells the story of her miraculous salvation. December 24th is a day that is always marked in red on Juliana's calendar, because it was the day that divided her life into before and after. In spite of everything, she mustered her strength to go on living and enjoying the world. This is what Juliana says, After everything I went through, I look at my life in a different way, start to appreciate every day and every moment, because none of us knows when and where our time ends. So just be happy now, and don't put off the meeting with your family and loved ones. And most importantly, you should never give up. There are times when it seems like the end, but no matter how hard it is, you should always gather all your strength in your fist and move on. When you get through all your trials, then you'll understand the real meaning of life. That's all for today. Write your opinion about this amazing woman and her story and rate the video. Bye!